Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. In today's show, we join co-host Jeff Pierce fly fishing among oil rig platforms in the Gulf of Mexico. He is joined by Sue Gross as they angle for red snapper and other species. In this show, you're going to see a new world record brought into the boat. It's going to be a great show. Stay with us. That was awesome. Extremely strong fish. There you go. Oh, nice. Oh, yeah, good fish. Good fish. Yes. We talked earlier about having the optimum conditions. Here we've got a perfect example of the family Heptogeneidae. Uh, very flat music. Sweet music. This is why you need a lot of backing. In today's show, co-host Jeff Pierce is fly fishing with guest Sue Gross and well-known guide Tommy Pellegrin. They're fly fishing off the coast of Louisiana in the Gulf of Mexico. This is an incredibly rich fishery with a diversity of species such as shark, jack crevalli, yellowfin tuna, false albacore, and other sport fish. Louisiana is a very special place and a destination every angler should aspire to go to at least once in their life. The fly fishing today is principally around the huge oil rigs that dot the Gulf of Mexico. The oil drilling platforms provide cover for bait fish who in turn attract predators. For anglers, this is a bonanza and really helps them key in on an active fish. Stay out of that rig leg. Two critical aspects of this type of fishing are chumming and running gun tactics. Most freshwater anglers would be appalled at the notion of chumming, but in the ocean it is truly important in order to draw in fish. The smell of fresh blood, combined with flesh, really sets all predatory species into a feeding frenzy. But this is not enough. You need to be willing to quickly work over an oil rig and then motor to the next platform, searching for active fish. We join Jeff Pierce as he battles yet another large fish in the Gulf of Mexico. We're fishing right now out of Cocodri, Louisiana, targeting some fairly shallow water rigs in that 60 to 90 foot range, uh, looking for mangrove snapper, Red snapper, cobia, uh, jacks. I've got a, a jack crevalli on right now. But we anchor up current of the rigs. Uh, we get a little bit of chum in the water to see if we can draw some fish out. Heavy sinking lines, heavy flies, and then just dripping back behind the boat up near the rig and stripping them back. You need, uh, you need fairly stout tackle for these fish. Um, minimum 250 yards, really, of backing. Uh, I'm using a 50 pound specter here because it's abrasive, uh, abrasion resistant, so if you get around your anchor line or if it does get around one of the rig legs, it, it, uh, it's less likely to break. Very st stiff, fast action rods. You need to be able to put a lot of pressure on these fish. The jacks, uh, the jack crevalli out here can be over 40 pounds. They're one of the strongest fish out here, so you need every advantage you can get to be able to put as much pressure on the fish as possible. It's important when you're fighting the fish to be watching your line, know about where you think your fish is. When you're anchored up like this, my fish just went under the anchor line. It was simply just a matter of getting the rod underneath. And all it takes is a split second for your tippet or your fly line or your backing to touch the anchor rope and your fish will be gone. Main thing with the jacks, especially, is just constant pressure. If you if you don't have a real good bend in the rod all the time, that fish is going to rest and when he does give you a chance to pull, if you don't pull, he'll turn his head down and he'll start digging again and you'll lose that opportunity. So you always want a real good bend in the rod. I'm running about three feet of 60 pound, about two feet of 40 pound, two feet of 20 pound and then I go back to some 30 pound for a bite leader. This isn't like trout fishing where the leader has to be tapered to lay the fly out. It's fairly heavy flies, fairly heavy lines, so uh, you don't really need to follow a strict formula. We're uh, using 20 pound tippet in case we get a fish that might be a state or uh, IGFA record, but also in case we hook a really big fish. 
we can break them off without losing the fly line and the, uh, the backing. We got color. When you get a fish near the boat, it's very important, again, that you're paying attention. If we only have 20 feet of line out and the fish shoots under the boat, you need to get your gut right down on here and jam the rod down there because with as much pressure and as long as we've been fighting this fish, the leader's gonna be fairly weak. If it touches the boat, you're gonna break them off or you can break a rod. Oh, look, oh, look at the big shark, uh-oh. This might not end up very well. Could you, could you leave just for a minute, Mr. Shark? <laughs> he come up there and took a look. Whew. That is a big Jack Cravalli right there. That is a big Jack. That's nice. He's probably... We're going to put a scale on him. Yeah. And he almost got eaten by a shark right here at the boat. These are very tough fish. Um, so they can, they can withstand quite a bit of handling. Uh, obviously, we don't want to keep them out of the water too long, but they're, they're real tough, real hardy fish. All right, so we got a nice jack here. He's about 30, 31 pounds. Put up a good fight, almost got eaten by a shark right here at the boat. We're gonna get him back in the water and uh, see if we can find another rig with some snapper on it. That current's so strong, they're staying down deep. So Susan sent a, uh, a bait down there to see what we were marking on the finder. And uh, that's what she found, nice big red snapper. This is the fish we've been looking for on fly all day. Oh, yeah. This and I drop one bait, and he buckles me up. One bait on conventional tackle, and that's what we got. But the current and the wind's beating us up bad with the fly rods today. So. We sent one down deep. We were marking some fish, so we knew they were here. One bait, this is what came up. So uh, give you an idea of what you can catch out here. Great fish, let's go get some world fly. Yeah, see if we can find another rig with a little less current and maybe get one on a pond. Good job. thing about fishing out of Kokadri here is there's so many rigs to fish. Um, these rigs are in 50 to 70 feet of water. We've got a lot of fish in, uh, in rigs in deeper water. So basically it's kind of a run and gun. We're going to go from rig to rig to rig. We're going to see if we can get some fish to come up. If it doesn't happen, there's so many other rigs so close by that you can simply run to another rig, do the same thing, and you do that until you find a rig that's got just the right conditions, bait fish in that, to bring the fish up and you can get them on the fly. Our optimum conditions here is light wind and very little current. Normally what we want to be able to do is to get a fly, your fly line almost straight down, get down to these fish. We'll be marking them on the sounder. They might be down 50, 70, 80 feet, 30 feet. We want to get a fly down to them and strip it up away from them and elicit a strike. Today conditions are less than ideal. We've got a wind that's blowing the same direction as the current, which is uh, keeping the fish down deeper and it's very difficult for us to get our flies down deep. But you kind of have to do what you can and uh, go with the flow with conditions because unfortunately we can't control the weather, so. Oh, red snapper, red snapper. I'm gonna get some of this line up because I wanna be able to keep them tight. There's what we're looking. Oh, no. That was a 
was him. Big red snapper just that took my fly. <laughs> you got to be ready. Absolutely plowed it. Yeah. yeah, that was a nice red. Nice red snapper. It's important when you're drifting like this to make sure you have a nice straight leader. You don't want it coiled up. These fish are very line shy, so if you have a coil of fluorocarbon or monofilament, they're going to be able to see it. So you want to take the time to straighten your leader as much as you can to keep as much line away from the fly as possible. Snapper, I think. Mango. Yep. Is it a mangrove? I don't know. Oh, yeah. big, mang big mangrove. Big mangrove. Nice. nice mangrove. I got it. You want to get them off that Any corner? Side you want. You yeah, let's it. get them over here. Over there. That is our intended target. Big mangroves and big red snapper. Six, seven pounds. That is a stout mangrove there. Look at that. Beautiful mangrove. That's what we're looking for. Fish. Little uh, rabbit style clouser right there in the corner of the mouth. Just drifting it back into the regular rig leg and stripping it out. He hit that on the first strip coming back from the rig leg. He's got a wicked set of teeth here. I'm not yeah, going to stick good. my fingers in there, but. Uh, Let me move my hand around and I'll get it open. Get him to open his mouth. Snapper have a tendency to not want to open until you get your finger close and then they open it. <laughs> he got them fangs in there. He got a mean set of fangs. And when they bite, they don't let go. <laughs> yeah, they, you don't want your finger anywhere in there. <laughs> no, you don't. All right, you want to try. Yeah, that's a First shot with that fly. I told you they were going to eat that fly. Right. I got the fly, Susan. Yeah. It looks just like this. Uh, <laughs> always keep it on. Uh. <laughs> Alright, you ready? Man, they hit like a freight train. They, they're like thieves. When they come, they sneak, 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 grab it, and run. It's like being a little thief. Stuff with these long. Hold on, I'm coming up. My long handle net. Look at the I gut broke. on that fish. Look, my long handle net, I broke. So I had to um, go rob one. That's a, that's another stout mangrove. Oh yeah, pretty. This is a uh, little silver side anchovy, bay anchovy pattern that we use for snook in the keys, but. It looks a lot like the little bait fish that are around the rigs here as well. Look at the gut on that fish. 
Yeah, I've been feeding him well. <laughs> been feeding him well. He's been eating good. Let me uh, uh, grab him. Y'all gonna eat good? What we're doing here is we're trying to get the line straight down. We're about 105 feet of water. We're using a sinking line, a fast sink line. We're letting the line down probably about 80 feet. And once we get the line down, we're giving it about a 30 second count to allow the fly time to straighten out. And when Captain Tommy starts stripping, which he's gonna wait another 30 seconds before he does that, when he starts stripping, what we wanna see is we wanna see the end of that rod action because what that fly will be doing in the water is enticing that back, that red snapper up off the bottom. You have to be able to pull them up off the bottom in order to land them. The flies that we're using today, some of them have uh, tungsten heads. Must add Jeff tied those for us, and those have been a big help in the current because the current has been strong. The rods we're using today are 12 and 14. It's a little bit overpowered, but we need them to get the line the size lines that we're using. Nice long strips. Hey, my arm's just so long. Nice long strips. Strong, whatever he is. Ooh, doggy, that's what we came for. example of what happens when all conditions and everything come together. We've got no current here. We've got nice clear blue water. We've got a lot of snapper on the bottom. With no current we can get the fly line and get the fly down deep and get the snapper to come up off the bottom. This is a monster red snapper on conventional tackle, much less on fly gear. This will be a, a women's world record, IGFA record for sure. Great Good job, job Susan. Great job. Yeah, Good baby. job, Tommy. I guess I chopped the bait right. <laughs> and I got Jeff's fly. Yeah, nice uh, tungsten headed fly, uh, heavy sinking line to get that fly down deep. Those snapper will come up. If you can get a fly down a ways, they will come up. I was probably about 80 feet down for that. 80 feet? Yeah. It takes a little while for your fly to sink down there, but in these <laughs> conditions with no current, it's uh, it's a certainly doable as you can see. Good job. All right. Okay, get your fly. Another fish on. Captain Tommy Telegram, high life. We're racking them up. Oh. Well, I know where they are. This is full contact fishing. These fish hit the fly so hard they about pull the fly rod out of your hand. And the only thing they want to do is get in that rig. Full contact? Full contact. It's like when I played football in high school. Coach, what's practice today? Wear the pads. Oh. Full contact today. Full contact. There he is. Full contact. That's a nice one. I can bring him out a little bit. I can't. Yep. Oh, that's oh. a good one. That's a big one. That's a good one. You 
anyway. I think we found the pattern here. We're tearing them up now. here bait fishing and uh, they work hard to catch 14, 15, 16 inch some the small mangroves and they would be going crazy to catch them this size and we're just pounding on them on flies in this deep water here. We've got a pattern and we are going to exploit it. That's right, yeah that's, uh, that's some nice snap. I told you when we got to this spot if they had any mangroves there were going to be some nice ones. He has got some Not teeth the there ass. you can see. Well, after an exciting day in the water, Jeff, Sue, and Tom headed into town to confirm that they had indeed boated a new IGFA world record. As it turned out, they had much more. Susan's fish was an IGFA women's fly fishing 20 pound tippet world record for red snapper. It was the largest ever reported on the fly and the official weight was 22 pounds exactly. It is also obviously the Louisiana state fly fishing record for red snapper. Meanwhile, Jeff's mangrove snapper broke the Louisiana State fly fishing record with a fish that weighed 9.59 pounds. That fish, as well as Susan's fish, are still standing. We joined them at the local weigh-in with fishery biologists who did the test to confirm species and size. Well, we hope you enjoyed today's show. Fly fishing in the Gulf of Mexico off the Louisiana coast is truly a memorable experience. For anglers who have never tried saltwater fishing, this is truly the place to get started. Just be warned, this is really addictive fishing. From all of us at the New Fly Fisher, thanks for watching, and please visit us on our website at www.newflyfisher.com. Hi, I'm Tom Rosenbauer. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you like this and you want to see more, subscribe and you can get all our weekly uploads. The New Fly Fisher is made possible thanks to the Canadian Fly Fisher Magazine, Scientific Anglers, Mastering the Sport with Science, Islander Precision Reels,